So I flew out to Baltimore on Saturday and I got in pretty late, but I got to an Irish pub and had some delicious traditional Irish beef stew that night and then I went to bed. The following day we had a 13, 14 hour film day where I was going to walk around and follow these families all around and just document a day in the life of somebody with Kernicterus. Our plan was to produce a two minute documentary that details what it's like to have Kernicterus as well as showing the resilience of the kids that actually have it. I'm also going to be producing a 10 minute one this week that'll be distributed online via Stanford as well as another company out of North Carolina as well as uh, PIC, the nonprofit that my cousin-in-law is the president of. That's how I got connected to this whole thing in the first place. So the technical data of this whole thing, I did try to travel as light as possible. I brought the C100 Mark II and I shot the entire thing on the 17 to 55 EFS lens, which is one of my favorite lenses I've ever used ever in the whole wide world. It's just the best. I also rented an Easy Rig Mini Max to just take the pressure off my back and shoulders because that's huge and very important, as well as my little small HD focused five inch monitor powered by a Sony NPF battery on top of it and a shotgun mic to capture running gun interviews. I also brought two DR10Ls and that was really critical and important to capture interviews on the fly. The goal of the day was to meet each parent and do a brief interview with them, an interview with the kid if they were able to talk, and also just filming the kids, going around, interacting. We had lunch together in the middle of the day and just capture the story of Kernicterus. So I knew this was going to be a difficult task because there's a chance it could be cheesy, there's a chance it could be boring, there's so many variables to make something to come together like this last minute. I literally have one day and one night to make the film. I only ran into one big hiccup in the morning. So I legit brought my NTG3 to do dialogue-y stuff, run and gun, and this morning I forgot my XLR. Since I brought no lights and no lighting equipment at all, I leveraged natural light coming into hotel rooms, which big hotel windows are some of my favorite things for light because they're massive soft boxes and the light is beautiful. So regardless of how ugly the backdrop is, the face of each individual that I interviewed in a hotel room just looked great. So I continued Ubering around Baltimore, meeting each of these families, and then we all met for lunch at a big Italian restaurant where I stopped and had a beer before all the families came in. We took over this restaurant with wheelchairs and all the equipment and gear that these kids need, and we had a great time talking about a track tragedy of Kernicterus and the hope of all these kiddos. He knew at that point, right, that yeah, he was going to have to be. So there I was, he's arching and screaming in his car seat, and I dro drove him across town. I got to the ER, they grabbed him from me, and ran. So a little backstory, Kernicterus is a completely and totally preventable condition where bilirubin levels in a kid become so high that the kid becomes jaundiced. This is an infant, by the way. If that jaundice remains and the bilirubin gets to a dangerous level, sometimes the kid develops Kernicterus. And what happens is the bilirubin will break through the blood-brain barrier of the brain and stain the basal ganglia, effectively destroying the motor function of the body. The issue is it's completely preventable and they can be treated with a bunch of modern procedures that are 100% effective at bringing that bilirubin level back down. The problem is many doctors don't see it as an issue and they say it'll resolve itself because guess what most of the time it does but sometimes it doesn't and it develops a life altering condition called kernicterus so a lot of emotional complexity and stories to tell and i had to find those stories just in one day and then put it together at night so we wrapped filming around 7 p.m and i headed off to the tim street oyster house and had delicious fish and chips that did change my life i then headed back to the hotel room i edited for a few hours and it took me a while to get in the zone and get focused there was a lot of going through interviews and just kind of making my way through the thing and then I broke. Oh, these kids I've been with all day, their minds are fully functioning. They're fully cognitive. They are um, fully aware and their brains are exactly where they're supposed to be for whatever age they are, but their bodies are completely broken. These kids aren't operating with like a three, you know, like a mental retardation, like a three-year-old brain and a 40-year-old body like we see a lot. They have fully functioning brains and they're trapped in bodies that just don't work. They can't communicate. They have to deal all day with people treating them like babies because they can't communicate. They can't move. Their, their arms are stiff and their legs are stiff and they wiggle and writhe and they make sounds that make normal people uncomfortable. And they, and inside it's like just a regular kid with hopes and dreams. And it just breaks me because it's like, you know, what did I do to deserve a functioning body, a healthy body, functioning brain? Nothing. And so to be around these kids, this 24-year-old, he, uh, he's a stand-up comedian, <laughs> which is so good. 
and he's got cornicterus and so he, he just his way of doing that is just so humorous and like every single one of these kids is has made something so beautiful out of their situation this kid from England his name is Oscar he's uh, 17 years old and I spent a lot of time with him this morning and he's just the cutest guy like the genuine smile when you walk up to him and he grabbed my hand and I shook his hand and you know he can't shake back but he gripped so hard as if to just like extend the warmest welcome to me some outsider with a big camera and a big rig he was just so freaking kind and I'm just moved by that um, it's so emotionally complex what we're trying to tell because again it's a totally preventable condition and it's absolutely outrageous that in modern Western society, this is happening because of negligence and uh, malpractice. And, and, it, and the tragedy of it is like, it just robs these kids of what they had. One of the girls, Lexi, um, she actually was the first person in the world to receive deep brain stimulation, which is just a fancy thing to try and make all this go better, get better. She is a, her IQ is like 160. It's been documented. And she was reading before the age of one, which is unheard of. And she has cronicterus. And so she's relegated to a wheelchair where she can't move. Her arms are so tight, her hands are pulled in, and you know, that cerebral palsy type look. And she, just the sweetest smile, that girl. And you know she's brilliant. And she's got ideas and hopes and dreams. And she writes, she wrote a book with her mom and she can't ever converse with anybody. Right now I feel like, like what in the world do I ever complain about? I have so many incredible gifts and one of them is my ability to just use my body. To tell my hand to move and it moves is something I take for granted every single day that these kids can't, they can't do. They can never eat the delicious foods that I love to eat because they're constantly being fed a supply of liquid food directly into their stomach from a tube because they can't use their mouth. They can't swallow. And they know it because their brain is fully intact. And yet they smile anyway when they see me, when they see anybody. It's just moving, it's sobering and you know, I'm honored I get to do this kind of work, but it's heavy in, in really good ways and in really hard ways. But I'm just moved. I'm just moved. So I got the first draft to the client around six o'clock in the morning and I took an hour and a half nap. I made some changes and then I headed to the convention center with my laptop to make the final changes and get the video bounced out and uploaded into the system that would be played in this room. All the kids got on stage and they shared a little bit about themselves, which was moving in itself. And the video looked like this. He became very jaundiced, had a bilirubin test before we left, left the hospital, but um, they said that it was normal and um, he would get better. Before, because of his tone, he could not actually expressively communicate things. This last like nine months has been a bit of an emotional roller coaster because for the first time James can actually tell us what's going on. It's a challenge because the, the, the mainstream school that Oscar is in is completely risk averse. They suppress his independence. But when he um, was about two and a half years old, I could say, you know, what does queen start with? And he'd say Q. And what does, you know, boat start with? And he would say B. And so we started to recognize that his cognition was absolutely more than intact. Starting with the equipment and things that you need to take and getting him in their chair and make sure you've got the meds and you've got all the, um, the rags and the, you know, special foods that 
for feeding them and that you have all of your bases covered. It feels like you are always having to micromanage every moment of your day. All I could do at that time was um, take care of Jess. We do a lot of laughing and you know a lot of trying to make light of and make fun of because that's sort of how we get through. What's really important for, for people to understand is that we as parents have the same hopes and dreams for our kids with connectors that we have for any other child. Get to know our kids. You know, nobody has followed Kernicterus in a population over a long period of time. And we need to create this kind of knowledge and evidence um, so they get the best health care. All in all, it was a phenomenal trip to Baltimore, making short films and doing what I love and meeting new, incredible, inspiring, life-changing people. These kind of things make filmmaking really fun. I'll see you next time.